My name's Benita Ely. I work at the College of Fine Arts and I'm head of the Sculpture Department, Sculpture Performance and Installation. But um, I guess the thing that I most intimately engage in is making artwork, which I've been doing now since the 60s. And although my work does um, bounce around from theme to theme, one consistent theme throughout my practice has been addressing environmental issues which started to emerge really strongly in the um, 60s and 70s. My early work um, started in London actually. I went to live in London for some time and there I began being aware of how much we were despoiling our environment and made some works about that. I was also working with issues of identity. Then I went to New York and lived down near Wall Street uh, uh, overlooking um, the Statue of Liberty and so on and so forth, Staten Island. And every day was confronted by the pollution that New York generates. When I came back to Australia, I was, I guess a lot of uh, Australians have this, you know, you, you suddenly realise how unique and how deeply felt your connection to landscape is here and I decided to make a study of a landscape that I'd had absolutely no emotional attachment to at all, to see um, what a landscape was without, without that subjective um, dimension. So I went on a series of bushwalks up Mount Feathertop in the um, Alpine region of Victoria and documented the landscape and made uh, um, sculpture and paintings and drawings and da -da 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 from that activity. And then I turned my attention to the Murray River which was definitely my homeland. I was brought up on the Murray in a little place called Robinvale near Mildura and uh, on my return to Australia around that time there'd been a royal commission into the state of the Murray River as an irrigation uh, source for irrigation because there was some concern that the water was becoming salinated and um, you know the, the warnings were starting to emerge that there was something uh, not right. So I decided to again document the uh, landscape and interpret it using that um, field research um, as the beginnings for artworks. Um, I went to five different locations that represented the way the um, river changes geologically. Um, I went up to the foothills of the mountains to um, Barmer Forest which is now very famous for the land rights issues around it but at that time land rights weren't even on the agenda. So Barmer and a little place called Boundary Bend where there's a beautiful um, sandbar where the Murrumbidgee comes into the river and then to um, Swan Reach which is uh, where the, the Murray cuts its way through sandstone uh, uh, cliffs to get to the um, lakes and uh, I also documented um, Lake Alexandrina. The photographs that I took of the Murray were very specific. Um, it was a series of um, photographs that mimicked the way a cartographer would map um, the terrain using aerial photography. So where the water and the land met, in other words the edge of the river, I set up grids so that they were exactly the right size for the to frame up um, the photograph in my camera 
standing above the, um, the grid and it was uh, four grids so I documented the minutia of the river of these, it, within these four grids and I was very um, disciplined about not choosing where I put the grids up so that there was this kind of um, uh, objectiveness about how I went about um, uh, doing this, objective as possible. And then I took a photograph of the context of the grid um, so that there was a photograph of the grid and the, and the surrounding uh, countryside. I took other photographs too, but these became the key works that uh, a lot of work arose from. And um, I'm not quite sure why, but uh, maps have always figured in my work. I think I like the I like to fool around with maps. I like the that they signify this um, theme or subject that we want to know about. We don't make maps of where daisies grow. We don't make maps of um, you know how a butterfly flies across the landscape. We make maps of where the gold is, where the roads are. In other words, we make maps about uh, the material qualities of the landscape and what I was interested in doing was mapping other things so and using the um, the methodology of the cartographer to map uh, things that that are um, uh, usually outside the the domain of the map so these uh, cartographic photographs uh, became um, this the uh, source of map making. They ca became the source for a lot of um, uh, drawings and paintings. They also, not all of them, but some of them I t interpreted uh, three-dimensionally as um, bas bas relief uh, panels that were put together. I also put together a book um, in 1980 called Murray Murundi and they featured these um, uh, map map like drawings as well, which I interpreted uh, in a kind of narrative way, seeing the river as a metaphor for um, the uh, journey from birth to death, which you know is a very kind of um, young person's thing to do i don 't think i 'd attempt it now, <laughs> but um, you know I was into the big grand themes back then. And the, the Murray Murundi book was also very significant because it contained um, oral histories from people who lived on the river. The first oral history uh, was actually um, an interview that Lee Hobber did with uh, Anne and Jack Kulmatry, Aboriginal people who lived at that time in Murray Bridge. And um, they talked about their connection to country, uh, the history of their family, the history of their people, and um, told lots of wonderful stories. And Annie uh, sang a song that she'd composed. It was just the most gorgeous interview. And I put that alongside um, an interview that I did with my mother, who's a great uh, raconteur, uh, about how her and my father set up a um, grapevine property in Robin Vale um, as part of the Soldier Settlement uh, Commission's um, uh, settling of returned soldiers after the Second World War. So Mum's story was all about uh, the fun and uh, hard work of, of setting up something very new and very optimistic and looking to the future and how how they um, you know they'd had this wonderful opportunity whereas uh, there was always a sense in Jack and Annie Kulmatry's narrative that there was a lot of loss that they were speaking often about the past rather than referring to the future what else did I do with the Murray River? Oh, how could I forget? The other really important work 
was um, a performance called Murray River Punch. I first did it at Melbourne University for an event called Women at Work. And my job was being a cooking demonstrator. And I modelled myself uh, after Ita Buttrose and um, cooked up this disgusting brew called Murray River Punch using all of the pollutants that were going into the river at that time as the ingredients and then uh, passed it around to everybody. And I reprised the, the performance earlier this year and did the 21st century version um, at uh, the UTS gallery, which was uh, amusing and very telling. The, uh, the fundamental problems with, with the river are, are, are related to the actual character of the river. It's, um, it never does have that much water running down it. And the water is um, cyclic and the health of the river depends on it flooding and nobody wants the river to flood. Any time there's an excess of water it's captured for irrigation and the river is uh, backed up by all of these weirs all the way along it so that in times when there's not much water there's the uh, illusion that there is a lot of water in the river because it's always backed up. The, the native fish and other uh, water, you know, river creatures don't um, reproduce properly unless there's flooding and so on. Uh, so there's a real conflict between what the character of the river or the, the um, uh, ecology of the river and, and what people are demanding of the river and I'm not quite sure how we go about uh, reconciling those um, uh, conflicts, you know. In 1977 I did the first uh, field work on the Murray and when it came to 2007 I realised that it was 30 years since I'd made that work and the river was in absolute dire straits and so I decided to repeat the exercise, the field work, and see what came of it from uh, looking at the Murray in a much more detailed way. So um, I went to the headwaters of the Murray, I, I uh, you know, did the bushwalk up, up the mountains to the actual place where the Murray purportedly starts. Someone made the decision back in the late 19th century, yes, this is the spot, this is where the Murray starts. <laughs> but even up there, you see the impact of uh, the European. You know, there's Brumbies, there's Brumby um, droppings everywhere. The, the horse um, tags their territory through uh, droppings and so they all tend to shit in the same place. So you get these huge mounds of horse poo uh, periodically and some of it unfortunately is done into the river which is just this narrow little stream you know this wide along quite for quite a long way. So the, the river is being polluted even at its headwaters. So I went there, I went back to Koryong, which is in the um, foothills, the same place I went to in 1977. I went back to Barma. I went back to Boundary Bend in the sandbar and the junction of the Murray and the Murrumbidgee. And then I went on to um, the lakes, Lake Albert, Lake Alexandrina and the Koorong and, and um, did the grid thing there and also took lots of photographs. And these photographs that I took show the ecological uh, aspects of, of the river at the moment, but also were, I, w I would call it a kind of archaeological look at the river because I was finding wherever I went there was detritus left behind by people um, fishing, camping, farming, uh, whatever 
picnicking on the side of the river, you know, plastic bags everywhere, all the garbage you would expect, kind of embedded into the landscape. Uh, so uh, I, I tried to capture the um, way people interact with, with place as well as just documenting the natural environment. I don't know that there's a key message as such, but um, it's more, I was there, I was a witness. And I'm, mo most people can't go to, to look at the river the way I have, you know, it's a very intimate account of the river. And I guess that's what I'm bringing more than anything, a, a kind of witness of what's happening there. And people can make their own conclusions about that. <laughs>